Hi guys, Mr. Bay. Uh, today I'm going to go over waves. Uh, before we go through the IXL, I want to kind of go over the science and the background behind what the waves are and the components. So we'll get this started first and then we'll get to the IXL next, okay? So uh, first things first guys, there's three components to a wave. They are called the amplitude, the frequency, and the wavelength, okay? Uh, this video does a pretty good job of showing it, so I'm going to show you guys visually, then I'll kind of show some drawings afterwards, okay? So, here we go. A sound wave's amplitude relates to changes in pressure. As amplitude increases, a sound is perceived to be louder. As amplitude decreases, a sound is perceived to be softer. Okay. So, in real life comparisons with like sound waves specifically, the amplitude affects how loud or how soft it is. Okay? And that's usually determined by the overall height of the wave, okay? Of both the top half and the bottom half that you can see, okay? Now, uh, moving on to frequency. Frequency is a little bit different. Uh, by the way, frequency and wavelength are opposites of each other, so I'm going to be going over frequency and wavelength in that manner in opposites when I get to it, okay? So here's frequency. A wave has a repeating pattern. One complete repetition is called a cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. If the frequency of a sound is increased, there are more cycles in a second, and a higher pitch sound is produced. If the frequency is decreased, a lower pitch sound is produced. Okay, so once again, frequency affects the pitch overall for sound waves. So once again, if I'm just talking my normal voice, frequency is like ish. If I start talking in really high pitch voice, and that means the frequency gets really, really high. And all the sound waves get squished together, okay? But then if I start talking like a super, I can't really talk about the frequency is really spread out. It's pretty Alright, so now comparing that to some drawings here, guys. So the first one we're going to talk specifically is the amplitude. As you mentioned, if the amplitude is high or the wave itself is very tall, that means that the amplitude is high, as I said. And basically, the sound would be pretty perfect. Okay? So on this first example here, with the amplitude, it'd be pretty perfect, Okay. Now in comparison, the height of the waves are now quite a bit shorter. So overall, the sound would get softer. This would be like a medium-ish sound in comparison. And if we compare it to the very bottom one right here, the amplitude of these waves are incredibly small. It's a very short wave. So basically, this would be very, in other words, this would be like a soft one. Okay? So loud, medium, which is in comparing themselves to each other. Okay? Now we're gonna come over here. Frequency, as we mentioned, guys, is if they're all squished together, then the pitch gets really, really high, so therefore it's gonna be a high pitch, okay? So over here, guys. Um, for this first example, since the frequencies, frequency of the waves are really, really close together and they squish together, you have a high frequency, okay? Now, the wavelength specifically, um, if you notice here, I put the word wavelength in red, and I put this little bar here in red. So the wavelength basically is determining the space in between the top of one wave to this amount of space it takes to get to the other top of the next wave, okay? And that's basically what a wavelength is. So what's going to happen is that if you have a very high frequency, that means all the waves are put together. If all the waves are being put together, that means that the space in between the top of one wave to the top of another wave isn't very much space at all. So in this example, guys, the frequency may be high, but the wavelength is relatively short in these examples, okay? Now, uh, the middle one here, guys, uh, this is probably like my speaking voice overall. So the frequency has now decreased. It's not all smushed together and it's not high pitch. It's just like spread a little bit more. So because of that, guys, the frequency is like medium-ish. And overall, the wavelength would also be in the medium spot. Because as you can tell from this one compared to that one, the amount of space in between the wavelengths has increased. Okay, so wavelength medium, frequency medium-ish, okay? Now, going to the very bottom example right here, guys, the frequency has now decreased. There's like 
maybe one wave, one and a half waves overall squished together here. So the wavelength is spread out because the wavelength is spread out. That means that the pitch of the sound would get pretty deep. So it's like really deep, but I can't talk deep. So, so the frequency in this one is low. Okay? But because the frequency is low, the space between one wavelength to the other wavelength is pretty high. So the wavelength overall for this one is pretty long overall, okay? So the main thing I want you guys to get is that frequency and wavelength are like inversely related, which means they go opposite of one another. So if one of them's really high, that means the other one's got to be really down low. Okay, that's basically the relationship I want you guys to see in this picture here with this example. Alright guys, so with that basic information in our brains, let's kind of tackle some of these IXL questions here, okay? So, our uh, first one is asking you which one has the greater amplitude. So as you mentioned, the amplitude is the height of the wave, so to speak. So whichever wave has the tallest height overall, so to speak, is basically the one higher amplitude, okay? So in this case, this one's pretty tall. This one's actually a little bit taller if you compare it, so I can pick the second. Now for the next one, it's asking you for amplitude again. Once again, it's all based on the height. So the higher the wave is, the louder the amplitude, or the greater the amplitude, the louder the sound is. Okay. And with this one, once again, greater amplitude, I'll just pick the first one. Okay. And greater amplitude again, we'll pick the second one. Okay. Uh, stage two is asking about the wave. So once again, we said that the one that is spread out more has a greater wave because okay, there's more space in between one top of the one wave to the top of the other wave. There's more space. So I'd say that one has a bit of wave. Okay? Now once again, if you just look at it, look at the troughs. There's three troughs here-ish. There's like way more there. So there's more space in between these, so that's a greater wave length. Okay? A uh, greater wave length, once again, is going to be this one because there's more space in between the tops of the wave. Greater wavelength here, once again, I would just pick that one because there's more space in between the waves, top of the wave compared to the wave. Right? Okay, now stage three. All you're doing in stage three is you're figuring out the frequency. As we mentioned, frequency is how much they're squeezed together or how squeezed. Okay, so in this one, the greater frequency is the one that has more waves squished together, and you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five troughs here. Whereas there's only like three troughs or three tips, I suppose, if you want to think of it that way. So I picked the right one there. Okay. Uh, this one, once again, you have like two and a half versus two-ish, almost two. So I picked this one there. Um, this one here, there's like one, two, three, four, five versus like two and a half. So I picked that one there. And then here, you guys, once again, for greater frequencies, the one on the left. So I picked that one. Okay. Now, uh, stage four, guys, you're basically doing the same thing, except now, instead of only twist testing you on wavelength or amplitude or frequency, it's going to test you on any of the three. So just be ready that they'll ask you a different question each time. So just remember, guys, in the back of your heads, okay, amplitude is how tall the thing is, so the greater the amplitude, the louder it gets. Frequency is how often these sounds occur together at the same time. So the higher the frequency, the higher pitch the sound is, and wavelength is the exact opposite. Okay, so the longer the wavelength or the greater wavelength, it'll be very long, but then the pitch will get a lot lower. Okay, so just remember those three things: frequency, wavelength are inversely related to each other. So if one's high for frequency, the wavelength has to definitely be. Okay? And if you guys remember those three things, you should find K1 to be a breeze. Okay? If you have any other questions, make sure to email me or uh, shoot me a message and all that stuff and I'll get make sure to get to you. Okay? Alright, well have a good one guys. Peace.